Sometimes I'm in the mood for takeout, and other times I realize it's easier just to make something at home. So that's why I wanted to make today my chicken teriyaki. It's quick and easy and tastes like everything you want it to be. So come on, put away your takeout menus and I'll show you how to make this. Did you know that chicken teriyaki is one of Joe's favorite meals? So I'm glad to be making it today. I'm sure he is too. And all you're gonna need for that is boneless, skinless chicken thighs, ginger, red pepper flakes, garlic, soy sauce, sugar, cornstarch, sesame seeds, mirin, broccoli, and scallions. So I have one scallion and I'm just thinly slicing it on a bias. And this is just gonna go on top of the chicken teriyaki at the end as garnish. Save this for later. And then I'm gonna make my teriyaki sauce. Just mince up two cloves of garlic. I have this frozen bag of ginger and I do this on purpose. When I bring it home from the store, it's usually too much to use all at once before it goes bad. So I just peel it with a thin spoon and then I just throw it straight into a bag and then pop it into the freezer. And when you freeze it, it actually grates really nicely off of a microplane. Kind of like Parmesan cheese. Okay, all I need is really a teaspoon. So we added our ginger to the bowl and our two cloves of minced garlic, two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm just using the regular kind, not low sodium. And then four tablespoons of sugar. And that's kind of the key for teriyaki sauce. You want the sweetness to kind of overpower the saltiness and then one tablespoon of mirin. And mirin is just a sweet cooking rice seasoning, but if you don't have mirin, you can't find it, then just use a sweet sherry. I personally like a little kick, so I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes and a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch, and this is your thickening agent. So just whisk that up. And this does not look like a lot of sauce, and it isn't, but it's enough for this recipe. So if you're a big sauce lover, then just double the recipe. I love to have a little bit of veg, so I have eight ounces of broccoli florets. We're gonna steam them in the pan first. For my chicken, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You can use chicken breasts if you want, but if you notice, boneless thighs are actually very flat and thin, so if you are gonna use breasts, make sure that you pound them out a little bit so they're a little thinner. And also, boneless thighs need more cooking time, so if you're using breasts, then make sure that you don't cook it as long as I do. Just gonna season lightly with salt and pepper because soy sauce is salty, but we're not using a ton, so I think you need a little bit of salt and pepper. Give it a flip. And if you notice, I actually trimmed the fat down off of the thighs because they do have a lot of fat. So all the components are ready, let's head over to the stove. We're gonna add our broccoli to the pan first because we're just gonna steam it up and a quarter cup of water, not much. Cover it with a lid, put it on like high heat, medium high heat, and then just let it chill out for about two to three minutes or until it's crisp, tender, and vibrant and green. Beautiful, right? And I like there to be a little bit of a bite to my vegetables, so I'm not gonna overcook it. Just while it's still hot, Sprinkle with your salt and pepper and that's it. It's just gonna be a light seasoning. If you want to add a little more oomph, you can add a drizzle of sesame oil. I'm just gonna cover it with some aluminum foil to keep it nice and warm. Place it back on high heat and you're gonna use a teaspoon of vegetable oil. Just eyeball it. This is 12 to 15 ounces of chicken. So it depends on the size of your thighs. If they are on the larger side, you probably only need two to three. If they're on a the smaller side, you probably need about three to four, but it's really your preference. 
let this sear on high heat for about six to seven minutes until it's nicely browned on the one side. Then flip it and then let it go for another six minutes or so. And then we're gonna toss it in sauce. The chicken is pretty much cooked at this point. If you're worried about it, you can put a lid on it and it'll just steam the inside too. Okay, so now with my tongs, make sure that at this point after you flip your chicken, don't touch it again, go give it a wash so that you have clean tongs. Now with the sauce, because of that cornstarch and also the sugar that settles on the bottom, give it one more whisk and then add it right on top of your cooked chicken. Mmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, it smells amazing. As soon as it hits the pan. Now, because there's cornstarch, you do want it to activate by the heat, so make sure that the sauce comes up to a bubble. And then what I'm doing next is just coating the chicken in the sauce and you're glazing it. So you're gonna do this for about two minutes or so, and then it'll just drink up some of that sauce and turn so shiny and beautiful. Just transfer the glazed chicken to a cutting board and let it rest for about a minute just so the juices can get redistributed. So let this chill out for a little bit and then we're just going to cut it thick and then spoon it over our rice with a little bit of the leftover sauce. Did you take a look at this chicken? I mean, I just want to skewer them with toothpicks and hand them out on a plate at the mall. <laughs> So we got our rice and our covered steamed broccoli. So you know me, I, I actually love hefty amounts of vegetables, some chicken, and then you have some of the pan sauce left over, just a little bit. And if it gets too thick, you can always thin it out with a splash of water and just cheat that way. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that such a happy little sight? This one's for Joe because he loves a lot of sauce. This is optional, but I like a little bit of toasted sesame seeds on top because it just brings out a little interest. And then we're just going to garnish with some thinly sliced scallions. Awesome! Let's have a taste! Now normally I wouldn't want my food to be compared to food court food, but in this case I think it's a compliment. Let's give it a taste. Do you like this mama bear, baby bear plate we got going? Mmm. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. It's sweet and salty. Just the right amount of balance. And you have a little bit of the warmth from the red pepper flakes and the ginger. The glaze is sticky and sweet. Perfect. I couldn't say it better myself. For substitutions, Instead of broccoli, you could always do steamed bok choy, or you could even just serve it with a salad, like they do in a food court. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Make sure that you can watch our bloopers and the behind the scenes of the making of this video. We'll leave a link for you. So be sure to push like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Mm, it's one of my favorite dishes. <laughs>